I remember once hearing an atheist boast of how proud he was of his young daughter who chose to become an atheist herself. He claimed that she arrived at that conclusion because she asked a very simple question. Who created God? Because if a previous God created the current God, then who created that God? And what about the God before that? Now, the young girl's argument against God certainly isn't unique. Many grown adults, especially those on YouTube, seem to think that it's a good argument to make. Yet while there's certainly nothing wrong with asking who created God, as far as arguments go, though, it's a very poor one. And in this video, I'll offer you two main reasons why. Time and time again on YouTube or elsewhere, the who created God or who designed the designer argument is often treated as though it's a knockout punch to God. Well, okay, let's suppose that God was created, created by another God and that God by another God and so on and so on throughout eternity past. Why should that even be used as an objection against God's existence? Many people today believe in the multiverse, the idea that our universe is just one of countless other universes out there, with each universe giving rise to other universes. Now, perhaps this multiverse does exist, but some go so far as to claim that it's eternal, that this self-replicating multiverse has always existed, and there's simply no reason for there to be any God. Now, let me be clear, I don't believe that God was created. But if some people are willing to take such an extraordinary leap of faith and believe in a self-replicating eternal multiverse, then what grounds do they have in objecting to a self-replicating eternal God? But clearly, the main problem with this who created God argument is its underlining assumption that if there is a spiritual realm, then it would function in the same manner as a physical realm, that it would be plagued with the same physical limitations that we all experience of life and death cause and effect. We experience and witness all around us the seemingly endless cycle of life. Things are born, mature, give birth to new life, grow old, and then die. And we see the same cycle in the non-biological realm as well. Take the stars, for instance. Go outside at this time of year just as it gets dark, and you'll notice in the southwestern night sky the constellation Orion. Take a close look, and you'll notice that one of its stars is red. This is because it's an older star and has used up most of its fuel, and in cosmological terms, it's on its deathbed. And when it dies, it will do so in spectacular fashion. And this star has swollen to truly massive proportions. If you were to replace our sun with this behemoth, it would stretch out near to the orbit of Jupiter. What that means is that Mercury, Venus, our planet Earth, Mars, and even the asteroid belt would be engulfed by this giant. And because it's so big, when it dies, it will go supernova and explode. Eventually, its remains, along with others, will gather into vast clouds of gas and dust and coalesce into a whole new generation of stars. Now, this is how our universe operates. And of course, it's all that we can ever observe or experience. Yet, why should we assume that the creator of this universe, or the multiverse, is trapped within the same perpetual cycle of life and death. These are the finite limitations of space and time which imprison all of us. But if there is a God, then he would stand outside of both space and time, and there's simply no reason for him to have ever been created. The most popular saying of Jesus that our culture loves to quote is, Do not judge. And the underlining belief is that the church must accept all forms of behavior, especially sexual. But is that really what Jesus meant? After all, didn't Jesus judge? Didn't he tell the adulterous woman to go and sin no more? Didn't he overturn the money changers tables and chase them out of the temple with a whip? Well, that will be the topic of next month's video. If you enjoyed this video and believe in what I'm trying to do here at Segway to Reason, Please share it on Facebook, as that's how most people end up coming into contact with these videos. And also don't forget to subscribe. Keep searching. ...argument is often treated as a... That's not good enough. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> what, is, what am I supposed to be... ...is often treated as a... Not the greatest timing stuff. We've got to work on the timing. <laughs> is often treated as a... Knockout. <laughs> <laughs> is often treated as a... <laughs> <laughs> is often treated as though
it's a knockout punch. <laughs> is often treated as though... You're supposed to say, it's a... It's often treated as though it's a knockout... <laughs> you're, you're not supposed to laugh. Well, I did a way even, though, even though you're enjoying punching your dad. <laughs>